Hey traders, what's going on? It's Chris at Virulo Trading. Welcome to today's video. This video, guys, I'm going to tell you guys about order flow data. We're going to look at a few things together and I want to provide you guys with a free footprint template that I created. It's actually a template that I use myself in my own trading. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you how I use this footprint in my own trading. And I want to explain to you some of the various features associated with it. And we're also going to look at the same template on an options contract, which um, is data coming from interactive brokers that I am putting in Sierra chart. And my neighbors make a lot of noise stamping their feet, but I have to just keep going. So hope you enjoyed the video, guys. The first thing is, why am I doing this? Why am I sharing this with you guys? Well, it's simple because I believe trading is very hard, very nuanced. Most people will not last, I tell you guys, because most people get into trading with false expectations from the beginning. So I want to give you guys all the tools you can possibly have and to study and to work on your trading and improve slowly every single day, okay? This is not an easy game. Even guys who have been in this game years, who are consistent, they show up to the market some days and they have no idea what is going on because the markets are changing. There's new variables coming into play, okay? So be humble about it, guys. You need to take your time to learn. This template is not gonna make you consistent, but it can help you to learn. So that's the main reason. The next thing is instructions for how to use it. So in the description, there's a link to a Google Drive, okay? And you'll be able to download the chart book files for Sierra Chart. There's gonna be three files. One of them's a chart file. The other one is a study collection, which you can apply those studies to any chart that you have already in Sierra Chart. And then the third one is a text file containing instructions and also some solutions of problems that you might run into. And it also contains some common questions that people ask, okay? And then of course, in case you're wondering, in order to use this template, you do need to have usage time active on Sierra Chart because Sierra Chart is a third-party software. So you need to either have usage time on package five, package 11, or package 12 because those are the ones that support the numbers bars or the footprint chart feature. And lastly, if you guys find that this helps you at some point, it doesn't have to be today, you can return the favor. I'll show you two ways of doing that. The first way is I have a buy me a coffee link in which you can directly support the channel and support the videos I make. And then the second way, which is even easier, which is just simply click on the interactive brokers link in the description. I don't know if you guys know, but this channel originally got started making tutorials for the interactive broker software and I just did them for fun, but it turned out that they eventually reached out to me and we have sort of a partnership and I'm really grateful to be working with them and you know providing you guys more of this type of tutorial based content and I can share things with you like this chart books, templates, trading strategies. I don't sell any services related to this YouTube channel right now. So clicking on that link is an easy way to support the channel and it will bring you directly to the Interactive Brokers website. And I, honestly, I think they have a great website. And then after you do that, it is a tracking link. Of course, you're going to probably end up seeing an ad for Interactive Brokers at some point, but that's simply the price you got to pay if you want to support these videos. If you enjoy these videos, you want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments below what kind of stuff you want to see. Thank you for watching. Here we go. So basically this is the footprint chart off to the right side of the screen here and I'll full screen the chart for now and I'll also minimize the camera just so he doesn't get in the way. And um, as you can see here, this is a chart where we can see volume at price data, um, which is basically the amount of trades at every price, the amount of volume at every price, the difference between bid volume and ask volume. And we can basically display this data in any which way we want. That's sort of what the power of Sierra chart offers us. Now, what I've done is just as a test, I've um, used my footprint template, but I've connected to Interactive Brokers on another installation of Sierra Chart. Here it is right here. And I have loaded in an options symbol, an option, which is uh, an option uh, from the Spider ETF, SPY. And it's a, a daily expiry option here of the Strike 367. This is one of the highest volume options for the current day that I'm filming this video. So that's gonna be a test to see if this uh, data is suitable for footprint charts. So hopefully this can be a reference for you guys. And at the same time, um, I wanna actually provide this template to you guys so that you can use it as potentially a learning resource, a study resource, um, so that you can study order flow and sort of how the markets work. So what sort of inspired me to do this video is because I've been talking with someone who is actually an old time floor trader and they told me they used to do point and figure charts by hand and they were fascinated by one of my charts which is a footprint that's based on a point and figure bar. So you have point and figure bars, but you're seeing the volume at price at every price and you can also display the duration of each one of these bars 
here at the bottom and honestly I'm gonna give credit to a trader a friend of mine named Osman uh, e mini OS on YouTube because that's kind of where I originally got this idea from and I'm not sure where he got it from but I stole it from him he probably stole it from someone and then a, a guy who used to be an old-time floor trader contacted me and he said I want your chart because that's something I used to do by hand and I found it very interesting anyways so we'll talk through the chart and the various features of it right now so you're actually looking at the live trading of this particular options contract which is a 367 call option option expiring today today's a Monday and we're 2 p.m. here on a Monday and you're looking at this chart here you have a footprint chart and you actually have the dome as well on the right and we're not we don't have the market data subscriptions for this but we are seeing sort of like the um, the best bid and best offer for each price okay so I'll talk you through what's going on on these bars and I'm, I'm sorry for the constant recentering that's a setting I had um, on the other markets which move a lot less than this one so I'll just fix that in the scale settings. I have it to recenter every five ticks. I'll set it to recenter every 15 instead so it doesn't do that. Okay, so I'll actually go over to my other chart. Okay, so there you see some trades from this morning, pretty decent morning, but let's go over to this chart book and I'm gonna bring over this chart for the ES. Okay, so here I've got the same template on the S&P 500 futures just so that way we can see things. Okay, so for this footprint template, I wanna explain to you basically what is going on so that you can potentially study it and uh, learn from it and make your own come to your own conclusions. I'll explain to you how I use this footprint first. I use it as a reference in my trading. I don't trade off of the footprint itself, but there is some data that the footprint provides to me that is relevant for my trading. And it, it gives me a couple of nuances that I make reference to in my trading. One of them is the amount of volume at every price, basically the prices that have the most trades. Okay, so that is something that I do make reference to. And that's how these things are colored. So let's take a look at one of these bars. Before explaining to you the actual data that's in the bars, I should explain to you what kind of chart this is. This is a point and figure chart. And the point and figure chart, basically what it is, it's a reversal based chart. And what this is set to do basically is set to one rotation. So one by 20 point and figure. So you have one rotation of 20 ticks. It means that when the market reverses by 20 ticks from a high or a low, it's going to start a new bar. And that's pretty much it. So logically, if I set this to one by six, so I'll set it one by six point and figure, you're gonna see a lot more bars and uh, each bar is gonna have a much lower duration. So you can see some of these bars now have barely anything. Like for example, this one didn't even last one second. Basically what this means is this was a blow off top move and then instantly reversed and it created a new bar in that. And then this bar was 13 seconds long, it reversed to the highs and then it reversed back down after that. So logically you're gonna have to adjust this for the market that you're trading. So for example, one by 20, is a decent reference for this particular market. But if it was a thicker market like treasuries, I might do like a, a one by four or one by five or something like that, okay? So again, let's look at these bars. Basically you have two columns per bar, okay? In the column on the left here, you can see there's an outline of the candlestick and you can see basically which prices would be the tail of the bar. So the open and close of this bar there, and then there's other prices there, that's kind of where the tail of the candlestick would be. But remember, these are not based on time, they're based on rotations, okay? That's what the pointed figure does. So you can play with that yourself just to figure out how the pointed figure works, but I think the pointed figure is one of my favorite types of charts because it's not time-based. And what can happen with the pointed figure is you get one big movement in the same direction, and the bar will not uh, rotate to a new bar. You'll get one long bar like that, for example. And then it will only start a new bar once the market has rotated 20 ticks off the low in this case. That's when this bar started right here at 1244. The next thing I gotta tell you guys is basically what's going on in the bars and how I have the backgrounds colored and all of that, just for learning references, okay? So we have two columns. On the left side column, I've shown the delta, which is the ask volume minus the bid volume. And I'm gonna change the number on the right side to show you um, those deltas in a minute here. On the right side column, in this case, I'm showing the total number of trades that have taken place at the price, not the number of volume. Volume represents the number of actual contracts or shares that have been traded. In this case, I have it showing the number of trades. So you can have a volume of 10, but if that was one print on the tape, it would have been reported as one trade, okay? So in this case, that's what I'm showing, basically the number of trades. 
the way the backgrounds are colored, you can see there's uh, different thresholds for uh, darker and lighter colors. I also have those configured um, that the darker it is, it means it's the higher percentage of trades in the bar, okay? So I'll now go into the settings of the numbers bars to show you um, basically how this is configured, okay? So we'll go into the numbers bar settings for this study. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the numbers bars text in the second column to volume instead of trades and just look at the difference there. You're gonna see the numbers increase so they get a little bit higher, but it's not a very big difference. The next thing I'll do is I will change that text in the second column to bid volume by ask volume, just so you can look at the deltas and just see how that works. So as you can see, the deltas here on the left side column are not showing for every single price point. That's because I've configured it to show the deltas only in the higher percentage of the deltas. And I don't feel like really explaining to you the whole calculation behind it, but basically this is the setting for it. It's based on dominant ask volume, bid volume to volume at price percentage. All right, and the thresholds I have set for that are down here, which are basically 60% and 75% are the upper two thresholds. And I'm only showing basically the ones that are above 60%. So just take a look now in the middle column Look at when the deltas get highlighted. Basically, they're only getting highlighted for prices that have a considerable imbalance of uh, bid volume or ask volume. Okay, so in this case, you can see 619 on the bid by 406 on the offer. In this case, that met our threshold. So you're seeing the delta print here in the left side column. In this case, the delta is a minus 213. So a sell imbalance there. And then these prices down here are also meeting our threshold of um, in this case, 372 by 205, the sellers controlled that, 278 by 129, the sellers controlled that, et cetera, okay? So you're only seeing the delta prints where there was a considerable imbalance between either the bid volume or the ask volume at that price, okay? I just changed the numbers here in the right just so you can see that and reference it, but the way I use it, I just leave it on volume or trades in the um, column on the right side. And then the other thing is the background coloring for the second column. Um, is set to trades percentage. Now I wanna show you the difference here if you set it to volume percentage. So what it's doing is the prices with the higher percentage of trades that meet our upper threshold tier of ranges two and three are getting colored with the darker colors, either dark red or dark blue, depending on if it's an up bar or a down bar. And um, basically the darker colors represent the prices with the most trades at them in the bar. You can also change this to be whatever you want. You can have it set to be based on volume percentage. In that case, it's gonna be pretty similar, but not exactly the same because the number of trades and the number of contracts is not the same thing. So there's a slight difference between the two in the coloring there. So I leave mine on trades percentage personally because that's kind of more of what I look for. So again, I use this as a reference, not as my main trading chart. So let's talk about the bottom here, which is the numbers bars calculated values. So at the very bottom, we have the bar duration. This is really interesting to use with bars that are not time-based because you can see how long it took for a market to reverse or how long it's been since the market has not reversed, right? And that's kind of what the pointed figures um, are able to tell you. And that's why I find them pretty interesting, yeah. So in this case, the bar duration for this one was 13 minutes and 37 seconds. The total volume was 27,000 contracts and the number of trades was about 19,000 there. And the delta is the top number here. So the difference between ask volume and bid volume. I also have those colored that when they meet certain thresholds, they um, get colored, okay? And I've checked them to make sure that there's no um, moments where you can't read the numbers because they're too dark or not. So I made sure the text and the um, background coloring is formatted in a way where you can actually read them um, when the color thresholds get met. That's something that can be a little bit annoying to configure in Sierra chart, okay? So let's continue talking about one of the other features here uh, that is a very unique feature. It's a cool feature in Sierra chart, which is the pullback delta. I might've shown this in another video. And by the way, if you haven't watched, there's a video on Sierra chart YouTube channel and on sierrachart.com video library, uh, which basically shows how to use the numbers bars. So that's a basic video for the numbers bars. You should go watch that definitely first to become accustomed with the certain settings and all that. Towards the end of that video discusses the pullback deltas from the highs and the lows. Basically what this means is that since this bar made a high, the delta was minus 767. 
And since this bar, the same bar here, made a low and reversed off the low, the delta was positive 314. So basically what these numbers show you is the delta since the bar made a low or a high, and when the bar makes a new low or a new high, those numbers get reset to zero basically. Okay, so let's say in this case, this bar right here is making a new low right now. As it's making new lows, that number at the bottom is getting reset. There we go, it got reset again. And now if the market reversed from there and didn't make any new lows, the delta here that we would be seeing is everything uh, accumulating, right? Since it made that low. But if it went down and made a new low, the number is gonna reset itself again. So in this case, the top number minus 2,600 just about there means that since the bar was at 36.98, that's what the delta was. And you can see most of those took place um, at some of these prices here, like 95.50, 95 even, and down here at 93. It's pretty big selling balance there, and then more selling down here near the lows of that bar. So again, pretty interesting little study case. You can just look at these bars just to kind of um, get a feel for, um, I guess, the order flow in your market and uh, how that's working. So let's look at the options contract. So what I did was I took my template and I put it on Interactive Brokers data here on, a, on an options contract, and this is pretty much what you're seeing. Now, one thing to note about this is that I don't think Interactive Brokers supports the tick by tick data when it comes to historical data, because as soon as I loaded this chart in, it had zero values in the historical data at each bar. I was seeing like repeated numbers and basically zero values for the delta. But then as I let the chart play out, the numbers came in like the uh, the real time data was showing the correct thing. So basically what that tells me is that the historical data provided by interactive brokers is not uh, good. They don't actually provide you tick by tick historical data. Uh, like in this case, you can see that's kind of what it looks like. So that's basically the downside of this. Um, but the thing is, CR chart doesn't support any other data feeds right now that have US stock options. So I think that this is basically the only option for anybody who wants to try and do this using CR chart to get uh, data for options and on footprints like this. And I personally think this is really fascinating because I mean, you're looking at, you know, trade by trade at every price and the deltas and all that. And the deltas might not be totally accurate either um, because there's no guarantee that the data feed is actually providing them. They might be getting grouped or, you know, consolidated in a certain way, which is basically inaccurate. And a lot of data feeds do this these days, like retail data feeds which is unfortunate because you're not actually seeing the 100% accurate bid volume, ask volume. Like for example, that 200 lot that just printed on the offer there, maybe it was a 200 lot buy, but also it might've been grouped because remember the interactive brokers data feed is um, I guess aggregating. I think it's like every second or every maybe half a second or something, five times per second. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Um, so it could be that some of that 200 lot that showed at the offer at 86 there or 85, some of it might have been on the bid. You might have had 100 that printed on the offer and then a seller that came in and hit the bid, there was like a bid there for a split second, but you didn't see that because their data feed's being consolidated. Uh, so it just printed as 200 on the offer. It's important to understand these certain things uh, when you're working with tick by tick data um, and that's it. So the futures data feed provided by Sierra Chart, which is their Denali feed, they claim that they have the 100% accurate bid volume, ask volume. So it's, you know, it's very good for futures data. They don't have that for stock options uh, because they don't support stock options data. The only way you can get that is through interactive brokers. So that's it, guys. I'll give you guys the template. Hopefully you can play with it, learn from it, and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this video, and uh, I'm happy to hear your comments, and take care. Thank you for watching.